glimpse and a sneak peek into the things that we're supposed to do, supposed to be doing every other day as you. I mean, we as a church, we have to proclaim the three angels' message to the people around. So one day, just one day of global youth day is not going to do this for us. And these messages, you know, will only be proclaimed if we put a, if we make a decided effort to be co-laborers with God. You know, evangelism is not just one day, it's a lifestyle. You know, our movement, the Seventh-day Adventist movement, if you think about it, the number of youth in proportion to the people who, who started the movement was quite big. If you think about it, Ellen White was a teen, James White was in his 20s, um, Uriah, is it Uriah Smith? Yeah, Uriah and Anne Smith were, were in their 20s as well. John Lovejoy was a teen, John Andrews was a junior. A lot of these people were actually young people. AY, as we know it today, I can dispute. It wasn't called AY before. What was it called before? Does anyone know? Does anyone know what it was called before? MV. Sorry? MV. MV, which stands for? Missionary Volunteers. It was called Missionary Volunteers. So if you think about it, the original name was Missionary Volunteers for the Youth. That means it will be youth volunteering to actually go out to do the mission. Yes, the name now is Adventist Youth. Um, but I also think, you know, knowing where we started is very, very important as youth so that we know what the duties and what the responsibilities as youth we have in the church and outside the church as well. It was started by you know, the MV was started in 1879 by a couple of, you know, of, of, uh, of young people, barely teenagers. And, you know, sometimes as youth, you know, we get bubbles and we get complacent and blinded with our purpose in church because we see all the positions and the tasks being done by the older people. And we have tend to think that, you know, we can't lead certain tasks or we can't do certain missions. We, we tend to leave it, okay, evangelism, that's for the personal ministries. We tend to leave, uh, we say, oh, you know what, that's for the minister, or that's for the pastor, or that's for the elders to organize to actually go and do this thing. That's what we end up thinking, because sometimes we are not actually doing anything in the church. Now, in the book, The Christian Service by Ellen White, on page 34, paragraph 1, it says something about this. Because it says, Young men and women, young men and young women, can you not form companies and, as soldiers of Christ, enlist in the work of putting all your tact and skill and talent in the, into the master's service, that you may save souls from ruin? Let there be companies organized in every church to do this work. Will the young men and young women who really love Jesus organize themselves as workers, not only for those who profess to be Sabbath keepers, but for those who are not of our faith? You see, there's more we can do in church as you. There's more we can do outside church as you. Our ministers are there for a reason. Our elders are there for a the, for reason. They're not there just to do the work for us. They're there to help us and to guide us to actually start doing the work. Someone said before that the youth are the future of the church. I believe we are more than the future of the church. Today is the day that we should be active. <coughs> not in the future thinking, oh, when I become an elder, or when I'm married, or when I have children. Things will be harder at that time. 
we should start talking to our elders and see what ministries we can start and what things we can start doing. What training we can get, you know, so that we can go out and, you know, minister to people. There's already something that we have in the NEC called Peace, Practical Evangelism and Adventist Christian Education. It is what it says. It starts helping us as youth to actually start going out there and spreading the word and seeing the need for the word to be spread. You know, just like a lot of our early pioneers who were around our age when they started, we need to set an example today. We need to be a good servant. We need to be a living sermon, a daily sermon. We need to make every day of our lives a personal youth day. If you make a personal, you make every day of your life a personal youth day and you be the sermon on that youth day. You know, we need to remember our God whilst we're still young. Tomorrow is never promised to make for us. If someone can just open the key, verse 4, verse 1 for me. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 1. And just read all of it. Whoever gets there first, read it. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 1. Go ahead. If you need to. Yes. Remember now the creature in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years do not, then thou shalt I have no pleasure in them. It says, remember your creator in the days of your youth. So whilst you feel young like this, try to remember. Remember your creator. So what exactly do you need to do? I have a couple of take-home points that I put down on how we can be a witness every day to our families, to our friends, to the strangers out there, to the people in school, to the people in universities, and how we need to conduct ourselves in the presence of God, in the presence of angel, and in the presence of man. <coughs> the first one is on our conduct. And here we come uh, to uh, our scripture reading, which is 1 Timothy 4 verse 12. If you can open your Bibles to 1 Timothy 4, verse 12. And I shall read on. It says, Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. I like this verse. Because it calls us to be an example in our lives. It calls us to be a walking sermon. You know, it's like a uniform that you're given to wear and makes us ready for outreach to anyone that, you know, we actually come in contact with. And that is what I'm calling you to be today. That is what we need to be. You need to be asking yourselves some of these questions every day. And here are some of the questions that you need to be asking yourself. If I am to be a walking sermon, what, then what sermon am I preaching right now? What sermon was I preaching today? The way I'm dressed. What sermon is it preaching to the angels? What sermon is it preaching to the church members? What sermon is it preaching to the strangers? Will the strangers be drawn to God by my dress code? Or are they going to be drawn lustfully to my muscles or lustfully to my curves? Which one is it going to be? Think about it. When we go and proclaim the three angels' message and then we start talking about uh, Babylon is fallen, Babylon is fallen, come out of my people. When you go there, they're going, to, they're going to look at you first and try to see if, if they come out of Babylon themselves, is the place that they're going to a good place? And you as a representative, as a youth representative, you need to be a person of good conduct, such that when they come out, they'll think, ah, yes, you know what? I'm going to come and follow this person. If you're not a person of a good conduct, they're gonna be like, wow, come out of my church and come to your church, look at you. 
So we need to actually check ourselves in our conduct. If I am to be a walking sermon, does the way I talk to my parents and the way I listen to my parents show that I honour them? Do my siblings, or are my siblings drawn closer to God by my conduct towards my parents and my conduct towards them? The way I conduct myself everywhere, especially outside church, does it show that I have been with Jesus? Will people question me and my conduct if I were to start talking about God? Or will they testify that I have been with Jesus? Does the company that you keep testify that you're a witness for, for Jesus? Or maybe you're just a group, you know, you're just part of another group, you know, that is a notorious group or of no use. You know, 1 Timothy 4 verse 4 shows that our conduct and our actions speak louder than our words. So if you start going preaching something else, or whilst you're acting some, saying something else, then people are going to start asking questions. Another one of the take home points is our outreach efforts. And some of the questions you need to ask yourself as youth are Am I a good example and a reflection, a good reflection of Christ in my community every day? Do I go out and witness for Jesus in the way that He wants me to? whenever I am presented with a chance. That person I visited in Cape Peter yesterday, was that just a one-off because it was Global Youth Day? Or was it God calling me to a higher calling to actually do this every other day? Every morning, we need to pray for what you call divine appointments. What I mean is, we need to pray for, we need to pray to God. We need to ask God to put people in our path, or to make us see people in our path who actually need our help. To make us know who actually needs our help. And help us to be a servant to those people so that we can draw them closer to Christ. And with that, you should always carry stuff that you can, that you can give out. You can give out great controversy books. You can give out Steps to Christ books. You can give out glow tracks. You can give out Signs of the Times tracks. And along with these things, you can give out the things that they need as well. There was one time that we went out with uh, one of my friends. And it was the people on the streets, you know, people on the road who would be begging for money. Sometimes, maybe some of those people might be hungry at one point. Instead of giving them money, you can actually go and buy them a sandwich get them a hot drink, but along with that hot drink, along with something that they need, you can give them a glow track, or you can give them a, you know, a Sounds of the Times track, you know, which shows uh, maybe, you know, that God is a help in time of trouble. And a lot of them, they can actually read, so you can even, you know, give them, you know, like small booklets that you can give them. So it's just a small idea of what you can actually go and do like when you're walking through town. Instead of just giving money, you can ask them what they need exactly. Some of them are feeling really cold when they're begging out there. You can go and get them some one pound uh, gloves from Primark. And then you give them something else to go along with it as well. Witness to Jesus, I mean, witness for Jesus in every way that you can, according to his will. Like we were saying before, when you have good conduct, people will start asking questions, why you do this and why you don't do this? Why do you, why, why do you not drink alcohol? You explain to them, and then you draw them to, to Christ. Why do you not smoke? And you explain to them that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, you draw them to Christ. Why are you vegetarian? You explain to them. You draw them to Christ. Why are you so patient in your life? Why are you so patient with that person? You know, they've been they've been so bad with you, you know, for a long time now. You explain to them, Christ has been patient with me in my life. You know, 
bring the conversation to Christ. 